Hello and welcome to another episode of Baggers Chat. As always, I'm joined by Mitchell Pattinson and Ethan Daffy. Sorry we couldn't get a preview out for this game as well. I thought we'd say that straight off the bat, but um, we are recording off the back of a pretty average performance against the Lions. Boys, we weren't expecting to win, probably, um, but we would have liked a bit more of an effort than that, Pato. Yeah, uh, clearly to touch on the preview, um, I know that we were very busy during the week, so it was just uh, simply we, we just couldn't find time to um, actually get all three of us. And also, Speechly was also maybe going to maybe join us as well, but um, hopefully he's back in the next few weeks. But, um, yeah, just to touch on the game. Fuck me, man. Um, yeah, just to just start, um, I don't know how you, how you can't lift for that game, um, especially Vossi playing against his old side that he used to coach for. Like, it, it just... It's once again, it's just, it's, it's the, it's this Carlton that we haven't seen this year. And I, I just cannot believe there was no heart in that first quarter. And it pisses me off that it, that we showed what we were capable of in that last quarter. I, re- I reckon that made it worse. Um, Cause I was just watching, I'm like, fuck's sakes. Like if we, if we were on straight away, um, who knows the table, the tables may have turned, but um, yeah, really, really frustrating. Probably even more frustrating than last week. Absolutely. Uh, before we go to you, Eth, obviously the score was 12 9 81 in the end to 17 12 114. Um, so, what's that? 33 points, is it? Um, I will disagree, though, Pato, in the sense that um, our late surge, um, we can't be happy with our late surge if we weren't happy with. Um, so, start of the year, the way we were winning games is how Brisbane won their game. You know, yeah. they were, were up by 50 odd point margins, would win by a couple of goals. They still won by 33 in the end because they put three goals, or whatever, in the last minute, but a couple of minutes. But we, we, we used to be leading by similar sort of margins and just be scraping in. So, but this time we were the team that actually were on the other end of that. So I don't think you can be happy with both. Does that make sense? Because, um, you know, Brisbane, you know, they should be happy because, you know, they won just like we did and we were beating Hawthorne by a couple of points and all that. But, we, you know, just because they took the foot off the gas and we actually pulled our finger out of our ass, finally, I, it's still pretty pathetic. But yeah, I don't know. Ethan, what do you reckon, mate? Tell me. Yeah, um, on that topic, I think it's happened a few too too many times in this this year, especially when we're out of reach of a win, when the air is out of the game and, you know, the energy is out of the game, we pile on a few goals when the pressure isn't on. Because um, once the pressure's off, we start to turn up. We get a bit scared when the pressure's on. Um, and that really showed against, uh, you know, finals outfit in Brisbane. We were we were bullied around the ball. We were like, oh my god, it was. Um, you know, I'm usually one of those people that watches games for the entirety of the game, even if we are playing like shit. But I had to turn it off in the third quarter just just for my, for my own brain. Um, it was just, you know, I don't mind getting beaten, right? It's not about getting beaten. It's about how you're getting beaten. And Jesus Christ, boys, that was that was bottom four effort. It was like we had nothing to play for. And it's on the whole club right now, to be honest with you, um, top to bottom, because I'm not hearing enough accountability from the president. Haven't heard from him for weeks. Where's he been? Where's he been? On Twitter. Hasn't tweeted since before the Adelaide game or something like that. Someone was talking about, you know, every week he was talking, every week when we're winning, he's going, yeah, let's go next week. Where is he now when we need him? Coach, just a little bit, I don't know. Vossi's just got to, I don't know, not yell or do stupid stuff in the press conference like Bevo, but, you know, really just, you know, I don't know, for us as fans, we need to hear what he really thinks of this uh, opportunity in the next two weeks because it's not looking very, very promising. Yeah, absolutely. It's like the whole, I don't know, the energy's been sapped out of the club almost. Like you watch the press conferences and it's like they've been the, the they're back to the typical um, blues media trained fucking vanilla answers. Yeah. You know, I mean, there no disrespect, but like um, Vossi's a legend, you know, we love him. But like even just watching his um, press conferences, it's very mellow. Yes, he pissed off because you lost, like obviously. But yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. They're just giving the same. And apparently people are talking about Harry, who's apparently, as we film this on Monday night, I think it is, on, on the couch at the moment, um, where he's given the same sort of vanilla. I don't know. It just seems like the energy has been sapped out of this club. But um, we also are still sitting seventh on the ladder. For some, I don't even know how we're still sitting <laughs> seventh on the ladder. We're, 
I think we've been there for about three weeks now, or two, at least two weeks. And we've lost. Well, the we last haven't. We haven't been below. Last... Seventh. We haven't been below seventh the whole year. So, yeah, yeah, it's a good effort when you look at it like that. But we don't want to let ourselves down by fucking it up. We're literally hanging on there by one point. Which 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 would was it Noah Cumberland that stuffed it for Richmond the other week? If they had uh, somehow scored one in the game or whatever, uh, that two points would uh, put us in eighth, I believe, uh, without looking at the ladder right now. But I think it does. Um, anyway, um, not as not not big up, but just very 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 big story to come out of that game is Patrick Cripps. Uh, he's just been given two weeks for his bump, um, if you want to call it that, on Archie. I think it was. Um, for me, that's yeah. It's a bit of a disgrace. Um, you know, like there's there's a shot that's been released of his eyes. You know, looking at the ball. Like for me, it's um, been you've been you've been given two weeks on you know impact and what happened to the player because he got concussed. Was it Rao um, and Willie Rioli? Was it was he a little bit while yeah. ago now? Um, that whatever it was that you know he didn't get concussed though. But Rioli's is fucking worse <laughs> almost. But because he didn't get concussed, it's all good. And I get we want to get concussion out of the game and do what we can, but there's only so much you can do as well, I feel, until you change the game and it's a different game, a different product. Like, you still want – you're teaching players to go for the fucking ball and then you're giving them two weeks suspension when they go for the ball. He can't help that he's six foot five and weighs 100 or fucking kilos and Archie's small. Like, he can't help that. It was yeah. If that was Durden that did that, there would be – he probably wouldn't have been concussed or maybe not, I don't know. And he wouldn't be looking at a two-week suspension right now. Pato, what are your thoughts, mate? I think it's just down to if there is an injury, you can't look at the injury. If, if, if it's a disgraceful action that is not a part of the game, we should be looking at that. It is the exact same with um, McKay last, last year, I think, against Hunter Clark, the Adelaide's McKay. Um, and, he, and he was actually going for the ball. Hunter Clark, he broke his jaw. He got off. McKay got off. So McKay got off and he played the next week, um, which, which, which I thought was going to be like this as well. I mean, I know that initially he got reported and then they challenged it and, and uh, um, they actually won the case. So I reckon, uh, like, I think we have to um, challenge it. I think it's a disgrace if we don't. Um, it's our most important player. Um, yeah, but I, I, I reckon that's ludicrous. Um, I couldn't believe it. I, like, like two weeks, I thought maybe, maybe even like a one-weeker. Um, if at most, like... Vision, I mean, like as you said, Sammy, I know that I'll um, I'll show it here, but just like the vision, Paddy Cripps is actually going for the footy and you can actually see the eyes. And he was literally going for the ball and like, yes, he knew that Archie was there, but if he stopped, we would have been like, why, do you, why are you going for the footy? Exactly. So how is he meant to stop something that he's learnt from six years old in Auskick? Go for the footy. And now he's saying, oh, no, nah, you can't go for him because if you hit him, you're out for two weeks and potentially out for the rest of the season um, when we need him the most. So, I, I, yeah, absolutely disgraceful, I think. But um, I think we I think we have to challenge it. Absolutely, mate. Completely agree. And um, the medical subs there for a reason. They brought a fresh player straight on. Uh, Ethan, what are your thoughts, mate? Um, yeah, obviously frustrated. I actually liked the action by Cripps. Um, it lifted us a bit, um, getting us on that little surge that lasted about five minutes. But, um, no, I just thought... It's just I knew straight away that he was going to get reported. Not me thinking he should, but I just knew it because I just just the way the AFL has been, you know, or whatever they whatever the the body is that reports these things. Um, it's just oh man, it's just a disgrace. And I, I think you know if it was a week, I might go okay. You know, he's he's got a week off, come back for the Collingwood game, um, which I think will happen. I think Carlton is challenging it. Um, I pretty much have to really, um, but yeah, like you guys said, he's going for the ball, and like Pato said, there's such a small margin from you know he could leave it, look like a soft prick, or go for the ball, and then people have a go at him for doing that. So it's like fuck me, what is he supposed to do? Um, I feel bad for Paddy because you know he'd be pretty devastated if it stays with two. Um, and you know the way we've been playing with him in the side has been bad enough and now without him Jesus Christ the uh, prospect of versing Melbourne with uh, Walsh, Chera and Paddy down the middle versus Viney, Oliver and Petraka, um, it could be slaughterhouse at the MCG on Saturday night but um, I think he'll go down to one and he'll come back for Collingwood or will smash Collingwood to make the eight There you go mate yeah exactly right um, what you're saying there as well is 
versus going for the ball and not going the ball. It's also a micro yeah. split second decision. Like we want players to be making these split second decisions. It's it's ludicrous to me. But um anyway, we'll move on and we'll be watching with a keen eye to see what happens. Hopefully it goes down to well, hopefully it gets off completely, but um better even just not quite as good, but one week might be all right as well. Um, look, I asked it a few weeks ago. Realistically, Ethan, are we making the finals? Yes. Is that it? All right. <laughs> it I'm, about, I'm, about, no, I'm not certain. I'm absolutely not certain at all. Um, I'm just hanging on to a piece of string right now. But um, I still think we beat Collingwood if Cripps plays. I think I think we have to. Well, Kennedy's back that game. Which is which is a positive. Um, I wouldn't want to. Yep. And Zach Williams too, I believe. Is that changes anything to Zach Williams? I believe so. At this stage, you should be. Wow, that'd be huge. In um, obviously Grundy's out for Collingwood for the rest of the year, which I just found out. Um, they probably don't need him to be honest. Um, but um, yeah, we made the eight, mate. Beautiful, uh, Pato. Yeah, I'm nervous. Um, as we said um, against Adelaide. We needed to win that game to make it easy for ourselves to hopefully surge towards a top four spot, potential top four spot. But um, my word, we've made it hard for us. It's made it so hard. <laughs> so um, as Duffy said, I still back him in. Um, even on the weekend, I was like, well, I, I think looking at the two teams, we've got the talent. It's just trying to get them together to actually mentally actually believe in themselves that they can win. Um, Melbourne, I don't think we can beat. Um, as Duffy said, I just think... There's just too many um, – what, what, this is so much firepower that we are kind of losing and also – like that we don't have, but also Melbourne have now. Um, and Collingwood's going to be so tough, um, so, so tough. Um, and that's just one thing that we don't have right now, and they, and they have the spirit. Um, and we just need to try and find something deep down within our culture, within our just club, just find something deep down um, to get us just over the line um, in the top eight. Well said, mate. Um, of course, we asked you, you both sort of said it there. You don't think we'll beat Melbourne, but we're going to beat Collingwood and make the eight. Well, you know, Collingwood beat Melbourne. So I know it doesn't work like that, but and our midfield is going to be well tested without, you know, Kennedy should be back, but without um, Hewitt, probably more than likely, obviously, and um, Cripps as well, it will be interesting. Um, yeah, I want to get your thoughts as well, just on Pitto. Should he have played? Did we miss him playing? And just over around the whole, I don't know, he was sort of managed, yet he was sick during the week. I'm not really sure. But um, Ethan, could we have used him, mate? Oh, we could have definitely used him. But just based on the Adelaide game, he just looked a bit underdone. Um, he just, yeah, I don't know. Like, you know, I think Pitto is definitely a number one ruck and just the way he goes about it. But if he's managed, he's managed. I've backed the call in, um, even though the, some of the calls in the last few weeks and selection have been particularly great. But I think it, I think it was a managed, uh, a definitely definitely a managed. So, uh, but yeah, Pitto would have helped against McInerney. Yeah, the only other selection thing there was I think Durden was perhaps the whole week. He had, you know, shoulder was bad. This is bad. He's not going to play. He's not going to play. Then his name's sub and ends up probably having um, some sort of an impact. But um, Pato, what are your thoughts, mate? Yeah, and then and then the exact same thing with Durden. Like I know that he was initially managed when he actually like when he got out of the side, he was managed. So that's why okay, well we we weren't we weren't thinking that he that he was going to be medical sub. Then all of a sudden he was medical sub. Um, we shaping on um with taping on his shoulder. So, um yeah, but Bowie Pitnet, um yeah, it's quite funny, isn't it? Because I know that last week we were speaking about saying yeah, no, he probably shouldn't have played him, but um. I feel like if he, if he got that game once again to play on the weekend, I think that's just another um, game he can get under his belt at the AFL level because obviously he was lacking the AFL experience. Um, I know that he was dominating the VFL, but he didn't really have the AFL experience in the, and, and I guess the pace of the game. Um, so I think, I mean, I, I know that I was a little bit, I didn't mind Pittnet being dropped, but also I reckon I probably would have kept him in um, just because with, with, um, with McInerney being the only Ruckman. Um, and I think I had, I don't know, like a McStay going forward. Um, I mean, going into the Ruck, um, I think we would have dominated that contest, especially since it was dry as well. Um, I think that would have helped. Yeah, well said, mate. Um, we'll get into some more stats-based discussions now. Um, look, 69 inside 50s, which is just way too many. Um, I wouldn't really like to be defending all of that. And to 46 ourselves is um, pretty fucking average, to say the least. Um 
and look, look at the set of clearances we had eight last week against Adelaide. We have improved. We had nine this week. So nine set of clearances to 23, 23 center clearances. To, that is just astronom- astronomical and nine is just pathetic. Um, we barely got the fucking thing as well. Like they were just in control of it. More kicks, more handballs, more disposals, more inside 50s. Literally, name a stat, they, they won it. Um, uncontested possessions a lot um it's just crazy uh ethan what are your thoughts mate <laughs> it's not much to say is there oh my god um you know how sometimes you say stats don't reflect the game they definitely fucking did um on sunday <laughs> um arvo because we barely got the ball and i think especially in that first half of the year we kind of pride ourselves off uncontested possessions where we were able to spread from a contest um, and obviously our clearance work and getting inside 50 a fair bit. But looking at these numbers, Jesus Christ, it's like 69 to 46. That is like, this is seventh versus like fifth, man. This isn't North versus Brisbane. This is Brisbane versus Carlton. Um, and we could not win a clearance. Obviously, it doesn't help with two keys and Hewitt and Kennedy, who I reckon have been superb all year. But um, yeah, it's just not good enough for mine. Well said, mate. Well, I haven't actually got in front of me, but um, I didn't watch the North game. But looking at their score, and uh, they probably would have got more than that inside 50 wise. But, um, Pato, mate, how do you read into this, mate? Uh, yeah, not really too much to add. Um, not really too too much more to add to that. Um, I think Daf uh, hit the nail on the head there. Um, just, yeah, just, um, it just looks like a side that wasn't really playing like they weren't really playing for much and it didn't, and it's just crazy because they're both, um, they're both in the top eight um, at the, at the very end, end of the season. They're both pretty much fighting for a final spot. Um, yeah. It just, I just, it just, yeah. It, it like, it's just frustration to another level. It, it, like, yeah. cause it, 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 I feel like it's just, I mean, I'm mumbling my words cause I actually cannot find the words to actually describe the feeling because um, like I think actually watching the game and then there was one thing when like I just think just the heart wasn't there once again and I know that we speak about the media all this shit um, saying oh yeah nah the, the coaches have lost hope the players have lost hope they're all talking vanilla sort of stuff like media conf- like conferences like robotic sort of stuff um, yeah it's, it's just it's just shocking but um, other than that I just think the stats really showed us um there's sometimes when people say the stats don't lie, but unfortunately, right there, that's how we lost the game. Yeah, absolutely, mate. And um, just on the media, these uh, about them, the certain players and all that speak of vanilla. I think I said that actually, but um, that's all right. Um, that's all good. Um, yeah, look, it's it's pretty pathetic, really. Um, like you look at hitouts, forty four. Like to be honest, for a TDK game, the hitouts are probably the closest they've actually been all year. Pito, we expect, we, we said we'll, we'll win the hitouts, we do. TDK, we don't expect to win them. We haven't done all year with him, I don't think. I could be wrong. We're just him. Uh, this week was actually 35 to 44, but I haven't got it in front of me. I'd like to see the hitouts to advantage as well from the big O compared to TDK, which I think does. Um, I'll get on to Hewitt and Kennedy in a minute. I've got a big write up there, and uh, you boys can listen to that. But I think the hitouts versus hitouts to advantage definitely impacts the. 23 centre clearances to nine. I mean, how can it not, really? So what do you read into that, Daffy? Does TDK, how did he go, mate? And is it more hitouts or is it just where these hitouts are actually going? Um, I don't even think it's about the hitouts, to be honest with you. Um, I think our positioning around the ball um, in the last probably since the break has been pretty awful. Um, teams just cut us up through the middle, like they just get into their like whoever's at the back of the stoppage or clearance. Usually, you know, the, the kind of quarterback or whatever the sweeper at the back of the contest is just standing there, tap down, or he gets it, gets the hard ball, chips it over the top to Lockie Neal. He gets a forward, gets a space, too easy. That's when you know you've lost the game when that happens four or five times. And um, obviously, Brisbane, uh, they've got a stacked midfield and um, they've been in the finals the last four or three or four years and um, they showed us why but we they're, they're not they're not they're not special they're not special for us to be getting butchered like that or getting just absolutely killed because I don't know like have we had an easy clearance in the last month like 
like a really easy clearance where you know, handball over from Cripps to Wall. She runs, he waltzes down the middle, 15, you know, 15, 20 meters, kicks it to Harry. Wait, have we seen that since the first like seven weeks? Like, honestly, no. dude, I, it's funny that though. Like, fuck me. Like, Charlie kicks his goals in the last quarter. You wonder why? Because he's getting actual service. I know sometimes you're not always going to get service. You've got to get the hard ball sometimes. But it's just, it gets to a point where it's like, there's no point of having these two stars up forward if we're not going to get it in and not win the hard ball in the middle from the source. And if you're not winning the ball from the source, you're just not fucking getting anywhere. All right, we'll stay with you, mate, uh, before we go to Pato and I'll ask him these same two questions. But um, you spoke about the hit outs and the clearances. Why do we lose the centre clearances 23 to 9 but win stoppage clearances? What's the difference there? We run 29 to 24, still pretty close, but what's the difference there? Why are we just so bad in centre clearances but we can somehow win the ball anywhere else? Yeah, it's a bit frustrating because we've kind of, our game's been around stoppage and obviously centre clearance. I think our stoppage work's been pretty good most of the year, even when we're struggling but um well the way the stats look at it obviously the stoppage numbers are better but when you're having your stoppage clearances out of your d50 it's a little bit easier to get the ball out when brisbane is set up you know behind the ball when we get it out so and then get it straight back in as the inside 50 show with 69 which is 13 more than the average which is an absolute disgrace so um yeah, it's like I said before, you're going to be winning from the source and that's centre clearance is so important. Won the first centre clearance of the game and we had a shot on goal. It just shows you how easy you can get a shot on goal if you just get a centre clearance. So, I mean, they had nine of them. So, you're not going to be winning the game of football with those terrible numbers. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Um, Pato, the hit outs, TDK's performance, uh, the differential in the centre clearances versus the stoppage clearances. How do you read it all, mate? Yeah, I don't think uh, the big O is the greatest rockman of the comp. So uh, I just don't think uh, I don't think TDK uh, was just. He, uh, I think he, he, he was just outbeaten by um, the big O, and he just didn't use his strengths. I don't think um, it was a bit like just TDK. Just he just needed to just be a little bit more agile around the ground. Like he didn't get enough of the footy. Um, that's what I saw. But um, yeah, it's just frustrating that what we've been really good with for the whole year is just our bread and butter sort of stuff is our center clearance work, stoppages, all of our just the run and carry, give it to Sardi, give it to Williams when he's back, just get the ball going, like attack it. So so we get Harry and Charlie up forward, even a TDK if he nets back in. We have a TDK down forward and just... Yeah, like I feel like, that, I mean, we've been talking about it since probably after the buy and it's just the hesitant sort of play. We aren't, we don't want to go forward, which I don't understand um, how we, how we can't, how we aren't actually using our attributes that we actually have in the side to get the ball fucking rolling. Just get it in there. Um, yeah. So other than that, um, I think Teddy K was disappointing, but also I just, I think it would have been really helpful to have Pitt net back. Um, but yeah, just other than that, um, to be beaten by a bread and butter sort of stuff, uh, really just warning. Yeah, no, well said, mate. I'm going to get stuck into two players now. I just, I think that's enough about stats. Like we can go on about the stats all day. Um, but yeah, uncontested possessions is probably the real big one there as well versus marks, just well out marked, um, which can be correlated to the fact that they just had a lot more of the ball and, uh, use it a lot better. But, um, yeah. George Hewitt, um, if you actually go and Matthew Kennedy as well, I think they're two of the biggest, two of the most important players in our team. And not because they're, they're Harry McCoy, they're winning Coleman, they're snapping and whatever, because they're off the ball work to actually like use their body in the middle, like Hewitt, Kennedy, like to, to actually sort of bump up, you know, whoever it is out of the contest and actually allow Walsh or, um, Cripps, to, uh, who also is another bull. That's all. Just, if we if we miss him against Melbourne, it's just going to be absolute fucking carnage. But, um, yeah, if you actually go through and read, like, I won't bore you with all the stats. I do have them all here. I did go through and literally look at every game. Um, but this is set about attendances, like Hewitt, sort of 83%, 80%, 66%, which can come down to a few things. If he was that was a game he got injured, he could have played less there, whatever. Um, whereas you look at Dow, I've got it here. Um, let me just... Pull it up. 
uh, like 27%. Like this is a player that's supposed to come in and, you know, replace, you know, one of these players and he's barely, barely in the center bounces. Uh, when he is, he's getting bumped off the fucking ball. Like he's not a physical presence. He's not George Hewitt or this is why he's not playing. This is why he's playing VFL. He's not George Hewitt or fucking Matthew Kennedy. He's getting fucking, he's ducking his head. I'm sorry, but he's ducking his head in marking contests. He's getting bumped off the ball. He laid one fucking tackle out the whole game. Uh, whereas so I ran through and I've got, the last three of Hewitt's and it was like sort of five, six, five. Um, and yeah, it's just fucking ridiculous. Uh, 12 tackles between them there. Like we bring in Paddy Dow as a replacement who attends here yeah, 27%, gets 13 disposals. Um, yeah, it's just absolutely fucking ridiculous. And I don't really know what they've done. I mean, what they've done is all the other players like, you know, Chera and Fisher as well is attending a lot more than what he would, we would have ever seen him attend. But yeah, um, Paddy Dow, like, what the fuck did he do, Ethan? You tell me, mate. <laughs> um, like I said, great stats, by the way, Sammy. I like um, the research, and that's actually good stuff reading through now. Um, but, yeah, I think these all these people that have been calling for him to play might have got a bit of a reality check because <laughs> the amount of every selection, every single week since round one, They've been saying, Dow in, get Dow in, get Dow in. Every week there's a whole fucking, everyone's going off. Get Dow in, get Dow in. We're eight and two and they'll go and get Dow in, get Dow in. It's like, why? <laughs> like Michael Voss knows and the coaches know he's not good enough. Like he's just not good enough, man. Like they say it at training, they say it in the VFL. If you can't back in the fucking coaching staff, which we'll touch on later, who I'm starting to lose a bit of a backing for, but... Um, just, just, I don't know. It's just, he's not good enough for the level. He's giving me SPS vibes. Um, it's frustrating because he's another pick wasted. Um, and we could have picked plenty of more players in that top 10, but, um, yeah, well, he'll be at another club next year, I think, if he's playing AFL, but, um, yeah, 13 touches is enough. But as a whole, I thought, as you touched on these two names, Chair and Fish are not good enough. On, on Sunday, um, Chair is just, what's he doing? Um, Fisher just missing some chances that he was taking in the first half of the year, especially that first goal that he missed at the start of the game that gets you going, gets the energy going. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's real depressing. And uh, this podcast is just turning into a bit of a depress, dep depression fest because there's just nothing to enjoy because really, what was positive? What was positive from the weekend, really? Durden's goal of the year or? It was pretty good, though. It's pretty good, but they're all fucking, yeah, they're all getting around him. And where the fuck was that? Where was that? <laughs> where um, was that? Yeah. yeah, absolutely, mate. Um, it's ridiculous. Yeah, chair of five tackles is very respectable, but um, he doesn't need to. Like, I don't know. Like, It's great that he's doing that, but like, how much better is it? I mean, we can talk how good it is if Hewitt and Kennedy are both playing, laying... 10 tackles in the St Kilda game, 12 tackles between them in the West Coast game. Like, we can talk about that, but, like, Chero should be able to – he's there to use the ball cleanly. Like, he you know, like he uses the ball so well when he actually gets it. Dow doesn't use the ball well and doesn't even tackle. And I just realised this has turned into a Dow bashing. Yeah, yeah. It, it well, was supposed yeah. to be actually well, – yeah. I agree with all the points you saying. And how good they are. With Dow, but I just don't think these players are playing well enough as a whole, um, obviously it doesn't help coming into a side that's been pretty woeful for seven weeks, I reckon. Um, obviously he wasn't good enough. You know, I'll put my hand up and say he was not good enough, but you know, there's just some players, obviously TDK, six touches, uh, six touches, six touches as the main ruck for most of the game. Um, looking through this is just, and I think with TDK, they're the big one as well. As Pat mentioned earlier, I was like, it's it's one thing to lose in the ruck, but his ability around the ground is what we say is second to none. Like his contested mark, he's nominated for three or four marks of the fucking year. He took two marks for the whole match. Yeah. Whereas yeah. McGovern, different, completely different players, whatever, but I do want to touch on this, played pretty well in my opinion. Ten yeah. marks, like his ability across half back to, to get them in that marks has been great since he came in. But yeah, just TDK, two marks. I want to go there. We'll sort of, we didn't do any matchup, so obviously before the game, so we didn't film, so we're just sort of talking about different areas. We've covered a few different areas, but um, just the back six as a whole. I mean, they got a lot of inside fifties, Brisbane, so it was pretty tough. But um, how did you rate them, Heath? 
Um, apart from McGovern that we touched on, I thought he was probably our best player on the ground. Uh, maybe apart from, I thought Cripple was all right. Um, obviously, Kerner did his thing, kicking his goals. But I thought McGovern was fantastic. Like you said, 10 marks. He, geez, he looks natural down there. And he's ball use. Can he take the kickouts, please? Because I don't know if I can put my heart through a Dockley kick out again. I, I don't... W- <sighs> <laughs> well, we've got to breathe because you know how much we love Doc, but there's got to come a time where we've got to put the spotlight on some of these guys because they're not playing well enough. I don't, Doc has just not been the attacking Doc we've seen. Um, we can stop talking about all Australian Doc because that's just not happening um, the way he's playing. He's just, he's gone from like here and he's really just spiraled down the rest of the year. I just don't know what it is. What, what do you think about what do you think about Doc Pato? Because I just don't. Uh, he's no, I don't know. He's just not ticking boxes for me. Yeah, um, I know that we have kind of looked at this game to kind of be what, what the stats have been the main thing to actually reflect on what the game has actually shown. But I mean, Sam Doherty finished with twenty eight touches, the most for our team, um, and that was obviously just. Um, obviously behind Lockie Neal. So, um, yeah, but other than that, um, yeah. I mean, like as, um, as Sam just said there, um, I think it's just because he does play a little bit free. He, he does play play on from the kick out a lot. Um, yeah, but McGovern was fantastic. Um, I just think he just looks natural. And I know that we've talked about his um, his brother and like his, maybe he might have some family, family genetics. Um, within his blood that obviously he does because how good his brother is. Um, so yeah, other than that, um, yeah, I think McGovern was probably one of the shining lights and um, yeah, quite disappointing from Doc. Sammy, what was your thoughts on Doc's performance? Yeah, on him, um, as I said, Gov uh, done great. I thought just as well, I thought maybe like we are missing that Boyd or even a stocker, but more so Boyd probably in my opinion, that smaller running defender to actually yeah. Um, use the ball well and get back when we need to because uh, the big ones are not getting back or whatever. But I just thought we did, we were just a bit too tall. But also, just on Doc, yeah, like he plays sort of free a bit. Like he gets the kick out where he runs outside the square, gets his touch. So he and he doesn't he plays off an opponent, but if he does have the opponent, um, so he does get a lot of touches. But um, I just don't think we're getting the Doc the impact that we're used to and that we've had for a long time now since he came from uh, the opposing team. Um, but yeah, I just don't think we've had that Doherty you know, impact, unfortunately. Yeah, and, you know, touching more on the back six, I thought a lot of them, obviously, like you said, the inside 50s are just it's hard to handle and stop goals, which I, I completely agree. Um, but there was some goals, man. Some of those goals, like what the last three goals are in the goal square on the line. Like how many times does that happen? Like it just, oh, it just it comes a time where you got to just, as a back six, talk about it. Like what... From the first quarter to the last quarter, what did, you know, Aaron Hamill as the, the defensive coach say? What did the back six talk to each other during the game? You've got to be out as a good team. You've got to, you've got to fix it in game rather than talk about, you know, next game and what to improve on. Um, Sammy, you seem eager to eat a touch on this subject. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is interesting as well when you got, you know, Youngy going in to, you know, into the ruck in the center as well. Um, I found that interesting. Uh, what were your guys' thoughts on that, um, Ethan? We had to change something. The, um, obviously, he has rucked before. He is a ruckman height. Um, and then you look at our back six, we're probably tall enough without him in there. With with Govan, Govan Marchbank and Weeders, that should be able to hold up, really. Should be able to hold up. Um, it looked like we we missed a bit of Newman too. Um, he, I don't know, he's just that kind of guy that, calms us down a bit or gets us going to points. But yeah, just on that, I think I didn't mind it, but it won't happen again, I don't think. Before I deflected with that question, because I completely forgot what I was actually wanted to say, it was, which I just re- re- realised, it was similar to the Adelaide game. The goals, their goals were out the back as well. They had like, them little, whether it was Charlie Cameron um, out the back, they got the ball out there and there he was in the goal square, bang, goal. And then a lot of the time he was there and he could handball it off to someone else that was also fucking there. Like, why were we... So like we're on the ground, they're getting it over our heads and just getting these goals at the back. I just, I don't know what was going on. Um, Pato? Yep, there, w- there was guys like Charlie Cameron to Zach Bailey to Lincoln McCarthy, give it over to even Starsevich coming off the back, <laughs> half back flank. Like for fuck's sakes, man! It looks, it looks like twenty nineteen Carlton, um, and I had to say it, but it actually does. 
um, just the intensity and the intent for the fucking footy just isn't there, um, which really frustrates us as supporters because it's been our bench, it's been our bloodline for the whole year. Um, yeah, but other than that, um, yeah, I think just to touch on um, March Bank especially, I think that we've. I think it's good because I think maybe like Lewis Young might, he, he probably doesn't, he, do, he doesn't need to be there. Um, I don't want him playing in the ruck. I don't want him playing in the ruck. When I saw him in the ruck, why? Why is he in the ruck? Um, so yeah, other than that, um, it just other other than that, yeah. <laughs> My boys about to explode, <laughs> boys. It's about to go. No, I understand, mate, because it's so frustrating. I'm still thinking about it. You know, off air and just in my own time, obviously Carlton is our life and people say footy isn't life, but it is for us and it does affect us because uh, the amount of passion and time we put in this. But um, touching on what you were saying before, Sammy Howe, we were pushing so high up the ground. Um, I actually like it, but you've got to be able to hit the fucking targets because that's what hurts us on the rebound. Like Wiedering's one where he missed the target in the wing. If he just hits that kick, we're off. And the, like, you know how every time they get out of the back, it's actually due to errors. Like yeah, with ball exactly. hand, because obviously some teams force it and shit happens. But when you've got a target a hit, when you play that risky kind of footy, which is rewarding when you work it up well, which is we've shown in the first half of the year and most of the year, just hit the target on the wing, we get going. He misses yeah. that target. Brisbane guy wins it. Charlie Cameron's at full forward because he couldn't be fucked picking up someone higher up the ground. It's like really, it's just, it's skill errors. and. How bad has their skills been the last four weeks? For an AFL side, fuck me. What are you doing? Scratching your ass all week. But, yeah, um, that's pretty much it for the back six. I liked Marchi. I thought he was okay. Um, first game back, but um, we've still got to be, give him feedback. Because, you know, I know he's been injured, but he's a player out there and he's fit. So, I thought he was okay. But, yeah, we'll move on from the back six. On to you, Sammy. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Um, well said. Yeah, do, I, I do agree. The ball just it kept coming back due to us missing our target, which I think is where like a, a Boyd or a Stocker would help just a little bit. But then again, Weedering and a lot of the other tools there should be able to hit a fucking target. Even our handballs, it just seemed like they were just sometimes they go over their heads, and it's like, what is that? Like, it, you're making a three foot fucking handball. Why is it going six foot over his head? Like, um, yeah, it was just ridiculous. But on that, we'll speak of the, about the forwards. I mean, they didn't get much of it, but as we said, like who who did kick the goals in the end? Kerno, Fisher, Motlop, all with two. I thought Motlop was pretty good. Dirds came on, kicked goal of the year. Um, how do you read the forward line, Daff? I'm loving Jesse Motlop every single game. He is averaging, I think he's, apart from Harry and Charlie, he's our only forward who's averaging a goal a game. Um, he is fit in perfectly. Shout out to Nick Austin for picking him because what do we pick him? What was it for? It was a 30 or like late 20, was late 20s maybe. That's a good pick, man, because he could fit into any club system right now. He's a perfect small forward, 18 year old. Um, I hope we lock him up for longer because he is, he's going to be a talent, that kid. And um, he's just, yeah, yeah, his mark was fantastic. Um, I thought his f- first goal was great, just looked like a bit of. You know, just a natural small forward, but pa- being patient, having a bit of poise, which we've lacked up forward in many years for many uh, small forwards. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, I think I think Charlie just does what he does, and um, I just think Harry is off. I agree with Motlock. Um, yeah, he's done. He's always been a, been a shining light, I reckon. A um, couple of goals, the, the pressure he brings, the he's just that spark. Like that mark was just. It was incredible. Um, fly through everything. Uh, we love to see it. Uh, we'll touch on the injury update really quick. Kennedy, um, his aim still around 23. So uh, hopefully we see him against Pies. Um, Zach Williams is the same. And uh, injured in game is Jack Martin. Um, no, he didn't break a leg or do anything too serious. It was one of the soft uh, sort of, uh, I shouldn't say soft, that sounds bad, but uh, it was one of the uh, little, you know, tight calf or whatever it was sort of injuries that he seems to get all the time but um yeah we wish you well mate and hopefully we see you back soon um best on ground east do you have one for us um i think mitch mcgovern um he's becoming one of my favorites actually um i'm not really sure you know i know he only played the first two games but i could tell that it was a major mental shift in those first two games and people write him off like saying oh he doesn't deserve to come back in the side like 
Um, he is he is so important for our team. His ball use is great. Um, I like the way he tries to attack and get us going because our defenders are deciding to do little chippy, chippy, shitty fucking passes around the D50 nowadays. So um, it's been good to see. But yeah, I like Gav, 10 marks, which is pretty fantastic. Um, he's a good defender, actually. Um, he's got pace. He's just like the way he goes about. And hopefully, um, Zachy Williams comes back and help him down there. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Uh, Pato, who have you got for us? Yeah, completely agree about Mr. McGovern. Um, I think he was probably the best um, on ground yesterday. But um, I've got someone different, uh, like I always do. But um, I think I'm more looking at just the when we were playing our best footy, who kind of stepped up. And we, in my eyes, I saw it to be Zach Fisher. Um, I know that he kicked two goals in that last quarter. And yes, he yes he didn't kick that first goal to um, get us started, but. Um, I mean, like he finished with 16 touches, uh, which still isn't overly solid. But um, yeah, I mean, like he finished with two tackles as well, which is probably not great for a pressure forward. Um, and also he transitioned into the midfield. But um, yeah, I think in our best passage, our best quarter, um, I think he was one of the one of the very few that um, actually wanted to win the game. Yeah, well said, mate. Uh, we look through here, it's sort of, you know, I mean, no one got 30 disposals. No one really dominated the, the midfield. It just doesn't really seem to exist anymore yet. It's all we had to start with. Um, but, yeah, Walsh, I don't think, had the Walsh impact. Doherty, we spoke about. I'll probably have to go Cripper, just the, not, not even the fact that because he had 20 and kicked a goal, but the fact of uh, 24 and kicked a goal. When he actually did do that bump on Archie, the game actually completely changed. He, he was a result of... It's kind of ironic the fact that he got a you know a high free kick or whatever he did in the goal square and kicked or wherever it was and kicked the goal. But um, yeah, I think he sort of tried to take us on his sort of shoulders and tried to lift us over um, and inspire us a little bit. But um, yeah, there's, there wasn't really too many shining lights. Probably even Motlock, you could say, played pretty well. He kept trying uh, as he always does. But yeah, um, a pretty pathetic game overall for everyone, I would have thought, um, as a team. But we move on, boys. Um, of course, the footy world is... Uh, Quick to move on. We uh, play, who are we playing? The D's next. So Days. we'll get a uh, preview out soon enough, um, which realistically, if Crips isn't playing, um, could be pretty average. But uh, we'll wait and see. Anything else you wanted to add, boys? Um, just to the blue baggers who watch our channel, we've got a few uh, good messages over the last month or so. Um, we do appreciate it. Um, we do put a fair bit of work into this, and we love doing this every week. And um, if you've got any recommendations or, you know, different types of episodes you want us to do, especially over the off season, or if we do end up making finals somehow, um, any type of different episode, uh, you know, give us suggestions in the comments below, but, um, just to get around the boys, because I know they're not giving us enough right now, but just back them in because you never know. We could fucking beat Melbourne this week, really, because why not? You get to the point where you go, why not? I know, I know Cripper might be out, but... Um, he's got to back him in MCG Saturday night, Paddy Dow, Paddy Dow show. Yeah, Paddy Dow show. I'd love it to be, <laughs> and I think it could be, but he's got to show something. Um, Pato, do you have anything to say, mate? No, mate, Duffy Boy said perfectly there. Um, I know that, um, I mean, we reached 300 subscribers through through the year, and I reckon that, I mean, for a us that we kind of started last year. Um, I know that we didn't really have much of an idea how to kind of run a podcast. So we kind of just came on because we absolutely love um, the Blues. We absolutely love the players. We absolutely love the club. So we kind of all just, just got around it because we all wanted to support the club. And um, yeah, I mean, I I mean, I know that I absolutely love doing it. Um, I know that it sometimes is a therapy session. Um, unfortunately, is one of the episodes tonight. But um, other than that, I just think um, it's always good to see other fan pages as well. Um, Cause I love enjoying actually, cause I want to try and listen to other people to talk about it because I mean, everyone's got their opinions. Everyone's got different views on the game, which I think is um, great. And I think by far, we're probably one of the best um, fan bases um, with content going around. Beautifully said, mate. And also congratulations to Adam Sard who played his, it was his 150th, 150th. game. Um, yeah, so congratulations to him, and I would best about wrapped it up. You both said it perfectly, so thank you all for watching and listening. Um, be sure to check out the next episode, and hello, mate, as always. And as always, boys, up the baggers. Uh-huh.